Hello and welcome into Check, Please, our weekly check-in at DC Prime Steaks and Lobsters. Not all steaks are created equal. Julie Donaldson here with you as always. And I always enjoy chatting with some of our alums. This week we have Rock Cartwright and we have Chris Baker. Oh, I gotta call you Rock and Swaggy. That's right. Is that how it has to go? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. That'd be great. We, yeah. we gotta go. A yeah. lot of times they just call me JD. Well, do you miss you miss playing the game? Oh, absolutely. What, what do you miss the most about it? Just the camaraderie in the locker room, you know, being around the guys, the atmosphere, the fans, you know, that's that's what kind of kept me going. You know, some days in the locker room, you have a bad day of practice, you go in there and you hear Fred Smoot talking and some of the older guys. <laughs> we still hear Fred Smoot talking. <laughs> you ain't got no choice but to, you know, kind of kind of cheer up. So uh, just, just definitely the camaraderie is what I miss the most. The same with me, man. You know, just all those uh, locker room moments when all the joking and, and, and cracking on each other goes on. Like the the way we joke in the locker room, you can't go to a normal job and joke. So you like, you, you kind of miss being as free as possible. You know, just being in that locker room, being around the guys gambling a little bit, you know. Um, then, of course, playing in the games. It's, there's nothing like playing in the games and making that big play and then having the crowd go crazy. It's hard to find out adrenaline rush in anyway, and, and, and anything else that you do. So that's part of football that I miss. I still feel like that adrenaline rush, and I'm just in the broadcast booth on game days, yeah. but you, you feel the energy from oh, it. Definitely. Um, we're going to get into a little bit about the win that we just had over Tampa Bay and also the upcoming game in Carolina. Um, but Chris, you spent eight years playing for Washington out of a five years playing for Washington out of a nine year career. Six. Six for Washington. Six in Washington. We got to get this right. Folks. <laughs> Six years playing for Washington, nine year career. You played eight seasons for Washington, yeah. 10 year career and drafted by Washington. Correct. Yeah. That's a long time to be with one team. Oh, yeah. I was I mean, I was I was fortunate. I was drafting the seven round four picks before the end of the draft. 257 out of 261 um, in 02 and Nobody gave, probably gave me an opportunity, but you know, all, you, all it takes is getting that foot in the door and the rest is up to you. And I was fortunate to have some good coaches who gave me opportunities and uh, I took advantage of it. And I embraced my role as being a special teams guy because that's what I was and I, and I took pride in that. So it uh, prolonged my career for 10 years, so I was blessed to have that 10 years. Can you relate? Oh, without a question, I was undrafted. Yeah. So, wow, okay. you know, being an undrafted guy and lasted nine years, nine years in the league is pretty, uh, it's, it's pretty tough to do, you know. Um, but being an undrafted guy made me grind a lot more harder, and I just knew that I couldn't make simple mistakes that I would see other people make. I just always had to be on my P's and Q's. And whenever I got an opportunity, I knew I had to show up and shine. And so um, it was a little difficult for me, you know, coming into the league and, you know, not being the guy, but being a uh, fourth round depth chart guy, I knew I just had to keep working, working, working. When I get my opportunity, just don't mess it up. And every time I got an opportunity, I just, Kept doing good, kept doing good, and then I got more and more opportunities, and I turned into a great career. You know, at that level, it's the one percent of the one percent. Mm -hmm. And I always ask, like, what is it that makes the difference between a shorter career or longer career, or some from the goods to the absolute greats? And it's a mindset, which I think both of you guys kind of described right there. Yeah, the mindset, is, the mindset is everything, and I learned that from Ernest Biner, uh, who played here a, a while a while ago, won a Super Bowl here, and uh, he was telling us how strong the mind was, and I never really understood it until I got a little older in my career and I, I seen that and I, I understood it and so I, I took advantage of it. And the mind is still strong in the everyday life. It's on, you have a choice every day when you wake up, either you're gonna have a good attitude or a bad attitude and only you control that. So I always look at things as uh, having a, the right mindset and cause your mind, your, your thoughts control your actions. Do you have like a favorite play, memory, moment, game from your time with Washington? The favorite, my favorite, well one of my Favorite memories, I got three of them. I'll give them okay. to you real quick. Yeah. Getting drafted by Washington yeah. in 2002, uh, um, making a roster in 2002, and returning a kickoff against the Dallas Cowboys in 2006 on Sunday Night Football. I remember that. Right. <laughs> and you were showing out. We I lost the game, but I, that was something I always, okay. you know, that's, that's near and dear to my heart. I will never forget that, you know? I got a few. Um, the first one was making to the playoffs for the first time in my career when it was with RG3. And uh, his rookie year was just so magical because that, that year was going to be like my first year really actually getting time as a, a backup. Mm -hmm. So uh, the first game was against New Orleans and I didn't play. But just being in that atmosphere, it's like, oh, I can't wait to get out to practice next week so I can show these guys that I can play. Just seeing that atmosphere and seeing the guys go out there and play, I wanted to be a part of that. And uh, that year was my first year really being a backup to Barry Colfield. And when we won that uh, NFC East, we had to pull off like eight in a row. 
And that was like the best feeling because everywhere we went, like our D-line would go out to eat. Everywhere we went, they would just comp our meals, comp our drinks. It was like the best feeling. Like we the were best, rock stars, right? yeah. bro. I was like, we haven't even won a playoff game, but to, to, to everyone around, it just felt so good. And then the second time we went to the playoffs, um, after we had uh, won the division in Philadelphia, um, when we came back, the whole parking lot was just full of fans. When we got back late that night, the whole parking lot was full of fans, and they were just cheering and going crazy. We won the NFC East, now we're going to the playoffs, and you never forget those type of moments. And in Dallas one year, um, I, had, I had a six-sack bonus, and we had already uh, secured our playoff spot where we had one more game to play, and it was against Dallas, and it was against Kelly Moore, who was the uh, offensive Dr. coordinator Gordon, now. Yeah. And I needed six sacks on a year to get my bonus, and I got my six sack in that game with my family there, so I was going was crazy. Yeah. Was that. <laughs> I like that. So that was a great moment. And then against Philadelphia, everyone knows the big fight that happened when I hit Nick Foles. You got ejected though, right? Yeah, you I got ejected dirty, first. Though. Oh my God, it was a legal hit. You should never get ejected. You should never that moment oh, though. That moment like, made the world moment. known. Everyone knew Chris Baker after yeah. that moment because it played week after week on every Every major so network. Take us, through, take us through what you saw and what you thought of that hit then. So when that hit happened, I saw Breeling get the interception. I see him running towards me, so I'm like, y'all have to get a block. Now I almost got the sack on that play, so I had fell down. Once I got back up, I was like, let me block the nearest person. And I didn't know if Breeling was gonna break through that tackle or not. So if he broke through that tackle, Nick Foles is the next person to hit him, and he ran towards him. So I see a green jersey, I just throw my shoulder on him. He just doing his, doing his job. You know what I'm saying? That's what you've always been taught to do, is to go get a block. Yeah. And right. he just happened to be a quarterback, and they always say you got to get your head in front. So I did that. I let my shoulder. I didn't hit him in the neck. Or, you know, I, I, it was all legal. But I don't know. I think he wasn't expecting it, and it fell off funny. And then Jason Peters went crazy, and so we had to fight. <laughs> <laughs> Putting my money on you should that happen though. Man, I love it, man. That's I, I love it. I love it. Have you seen this guy dance? No, I ain't seen Big Bang okay, Dance. I well, need to check him we're, out. We're gonna have to check him out. I'm sure I'm gonna have to Google some and see if I know You're they got some dance. You're gonna have to see some video of his dance. Where did those dance moves come from? Uh, YouTube. It was like yeah. the popular <laughs> dance. Uh, I remember my first sack I got against Jay Cutler, and it was this uh this real chubby kid on the internet. He was like internet sensation. It was called Lil Terio. So my first sack dance was the Ooh Terio. It was like Ooh. Ooh, kill him, kill him, ooh, okay, kill him. Okay. So that was my first dance. And then the year when I, I really like had a great season, I had this, the, uh, the six sack season, um, the Millie Rock on any block was going crazy that year. So every time I got a sack, I was out there Millie Rocking everywhere. I had everybody in the stadium just Millie Rocking. So it was a great feeling. Right? I'll tell you, when I was playing, uh, it was the, uh, the Jim Jones came out balling. Whoa, whoa. And it was like, yeah, and that was like the New York Giants kind of started that. So I hated seeing them do that yeah, when they got yeah. a sack or something. So I never forget that. What was, what was your celebration? So my first t ever touchdown was against the Houston Texans. We playing a, uh, we ran a play called War Eagles. Steve Spurrier was the head coach, and I did a uh, with my one of my my junior college roommate. His name is Duke. His buddy was named Tree Boy, so we called him Tree Boy. So he used to do a little dance. So I did the little Tree Boy, <laughs> and so that's kind of what I did. So that was my thing when I scored my my first touchdown. You know, yeah. Great on. Hey, the apps are coming, which means we need to take a little bit of a pause, get into some of this food looks good coming in here. Thank you so much. But I want to get, when we come back, both of y'all's takes on the current state of the team, that win, maybe some DeAndre Carter, Jarrett Patterson, some of these smaller running backs, like maybe an advantage for them. And I got to hit you up. Montez Sweat, Chase Young, they are out. What does this D-line do? Stay with us here on Check Please. Hey Washington fans, Alex Strimo from Box is here to tell you that you don't have to wait for the big game anymore to get in on the action. With Box's free to play games, you can pick boxes every day and win huge prizes across all your favorite sports. All you have to do is pick a box, match your numbers and win. So download the app now and start playing today. Games are completely free and players can win official Washington football team merchandise and other great prizes all season long. Boxes, it's anyone's game. Now there's a way to make supporting your favorite restaurant even better. Introducing the Grubhub Guarantee. 
It's our promise to make sure your food is just right by delivering it on time within the delivery window and for the lowest price compared to other apps. Or you'll get back at least $5 in perks. That way you can experience your food just like the restaurant intended. That's the Grubhub guarantee. It's about grit. It's about guts. It's about winning. It's about where we come from and what we can be. It's about DC and celebrating our football team. With the Washington football team scratcher from the DC Lottery, you can win up to $50,000 as well as some exciting second chance opportunities. And you can continue your winning experience at DCILottery.com. This week on FanDuel Sportsbook, we're offering an exclusive odds boost to new customers. So you can turn... I like those odds. ...into... I love those odds. ...and little dubs... <laughs> ...into big dubs. But it's only happening now. Make every moment more with FanDuel Sportsbook when you boost your odds right now. Whew, you big, man. New customers get exclusive 40 to 1 odds on any team to win their week one matchup. Bet $5 to win 200 Welcome back on Into Check, please. Uh, I want to ask these guys a little bit about some of the current guys. And, and Rock, I want to start with you. First off, what do you think when you see DeAndre Carter and what he's been doing in that return game? Uh, he's doing what he needs to do. He's getting the job done. And uh, now that I know more about his story, I have so much more respect yeah. for, for DeAndre Carter. I mean, he's, he lost he's, his brother. Yeah, he lost his brother. And that's his, his brother and him made promises to play in the league together. Yeah. So he keeps fighting. He's been through four teams. Uh, this is the fourth team he's on yeah. in a very short career. And he's been cut kept, like eight times. And he keeps going because he wants to carry out his brother's legacy. That's my mantra, yeah. keep going. In life, football, whatever it is, you got to keep going, you know, regardless of what happens. Time doesn't stop. And that's the only thing in life we never get back is time. So he made that promise to his brother and he's living up to it, living up to it and I, I, I'm wishing him continued success because he's doing a fantastic job back there. What I like beyond just him in the return game is what he's doing as a receiver as well. He's our number two guy. He's our number two guy and he's he's deserving of that. You know, he's worked his butt off to get to where he is and uh, he's taking advantage of his opportunities opportunity and that's what it takes and he's doing a fantastic job job of it and I'm like I said I'm cheering for him. He told us uh, on a podcast, The Players Club, they said early on in his career when he was on some of those other teams in the practice squad, he didn't take advantage of his opportunities as much. He wasn't as prepared as he is now to do that, but that's why he's having success now. And and it's so. showing. It's showing. So, DeAndre, keep doing what you're doing, brother. And uh, I'm your big, I'm one of your biggest fans. You don't know me, but I'm one of your biggest fans. I Bake, let me come over to you. Uh, the reason DeAndre is out there in the receiving game is because of injuries. And that's one thing that he said as a practice squad guy, you always have to, you don't want to root for an injury, but you have to wait for an injury to have your opportunities. On the D-line, there's going to be some opportunities. Montez Sweat is out on IR with a broken jaw. Don't know how long that may be. Chase Young is done for the season. Who do you see stepping up and what do they need to do to account for the loss of those two guys? Well, it's hard to step step up for those quality of guys, you know, but everyone just has to do their job. Whoever's the next man up just has to go out there and perform. And that's kind of like how I got my shot. I wasn't rooting for someone to get hurt, but I knew if someone get hurt, I would get more of an opportunity. But when you get that opportunity, it's just time for you to step up and really take advantage of that opportunity. So whoever gets called up off the practice squad or whoever they may bring in off the street, it's time for them to shine and prove their worth to be on the team. Um, so it's not just one particular person. I mean, Jonathan Allen is playing at an all pro level. Yeah, he is. <laughs> Payne's playing at a Pro Bowl level, so we got good guys in the middle. Then you still got Matt Ioannidis and Tim Settle, so we have a bunch of guys who can generate pass rush, so it's just about us playing together as a team and next man up mentality, because if you look at every roster in the league, somebody's lost somebody major at, 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 a, at a key position, so that next man up mentality is like, it's life in the NFL. You That's know, part of the game. So, somebody go down, the next man step up yep. and play. So it's just about taking advantage of the opportunity 
no matter who it is, you know, inside guys are really doing good. So whoever comes in off the outside just have to do a good job of being disciplined, right. keeping the quarterback inside the pocket and letting the guys in the middle do what they do. We have what, James Smith Williams that'll have an opportunity, maybe Casey Tuhill. But it, it, one thing that Coach Rivera also said too is they're gonna be a little creative with their disguises. Maybe blitz a little bit more, bring different guys up. Um, you're going up against Carolina. And if we're talking about that D-line who's going to get to the quarterback, let me just throw it right on out there. Go ahead. <laughs> Head coach Ron Rivera has the opportunity to go after his former team in Carolina and against his former quarterback in Cam Newton. Uh, he said NFL always is a little twist to the storylines. This Cam story puts a little twist to it. What do you think the advantage is if you have a former coach going to his place and a former quarterback that knows the coach? Well, you better believe that coach has a, a book on Cam, what he likes, what he doesn't like. So he's going to do whatever he needs to do to make sure they give Cam a dose of what he doesn't like. And they may be blitzing more, they may be bringing cornerbacks or whatever the case may be, coach knows. So just believe, these guys gotta believe whatever coach says Cam doesn't like, he doesn't like. So they need to do that. So they just gotta be attention to detail and do the things that, uh, will make Cam not as effective as he can be. If you're trying to go for Cam, and here's the thing that I, I think you, and, and look, you never assume anything, right? But you know Cam's probably pretty good with his legs. He's new, so how much does he really have connection with his receivers? We've already seen he can get out and, and run and scramble. If you're a D-line guy going up against him down there, what do you think the best way is to try and counteract that? Trying to keep him in the pocket. Don't allow Cam to get outside the pocket and be a playmaker. But keep him in that pocket and make the things uncomfortable for him. If you could keep him corralled in that pocket, that don't give him a chance to go out there and, and just make spectacular play. That's where he's at his best. Like Tom Brady, for instance, we knew that he wasn't at, at his best if he had to scramble. That's why he brought so many pressures up the middle. The pocket. Because he had to get him off the spot. Yep. Cam New is one of those guys that you want to keep on the spot and just find a way to just corral him and don't give him a rain to uh, a chance to get out and break contain because when he breaks contain, that's when the big plays happen. But, you know, they have so many weapons on that Carolina offense, so we just got to do, really do a good job on, on defense and just following yeah, them up and making it yeah. one-dimensional. Yeah, they do. They're, although their offense has really kind of struggled a little bit. Their their defense has been, like, legit. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, they do have guys on offense. They have one of I the mean, best McCaffrey, running backs. Yeah. Christian McCaffrey, that, that you have to attest. He just to came back and he's finally and they have new healthy. Life. Yeah. Yeah. It, it comes down, I think, a little bit to, you know, and we're coming out of this Tampa Bay game, and you mentioned Tom Brady. This defense came out ready for Tom Brady. Yeah. Two picks early, you got Tom off his game. Yeah. Tom's not easy to get off his game. They were able to confuse Tom Brady. Not easy to confuse Brady. Now you're up against an offense that's trying to get new life with Cam Newton, but has been struggling for the most part. Their defense has carried them, if at all, you know, for the most part. Um, it comes down to kind of who wants it more. And we heard some of these guys after that Tampa Bay game say that you could tell Washington wanted that win more than Tampa Bay. I mean, you can see that. You you I'm a big body language guy, okay, right? Okay, so tell me. So you I was see, asking you, you can, feed into that. You can see the guy's body language. You can see they knew what was going on. The defensive line played exceptionally well. The defensive backs, the linebackers, they all were on the same page. And we had two weeks to prepare for Tampa, so they gave us even more of an opportunity to go out and, and execute. And prepare for us. Yeah, but we executed. One thing I know about football, the best team don't always Do win on Sunday. Do you think Tampa looked past Washington because we were on a four game I think they did. I think they may have, but you can never, any given Sunday, it's not the team that, it's not the best team, it's the team that plays the best on Sunday. And a lot of people don't understand that. Now, the way Washington played, let me ask, like, is it sustainable? Because they kind of played the way people were expecting and wanting them to start the season. I have no question that we could uh, play the way like we played on Sunday. Just a matter of just being consistent and doing it over and over and having the right game plan and the coaches putting the guys in the right position. I understand that we had two weeks to prepare for Timber, but our guys were in the right position all day. Is that coaching or player then? Both. Both. Okay. Both. Yeah. You know, Both like hand the, in hand. The, the coaches are, you know, their goal is to put us in the right position, but at the end of the day, as a player, you got to go out there and make plays. And we went out there and made plays. We didn't drop those interceptions. We made those interceptions. We made those big plays. We made that pressure tough on Tom Brady for him to throw and get hit at the same time to cause an interception. So it's just a matter of players just stepping up and making those plays. And when the player, and when the coach puts the player in a position 
Make the play that you're supposed to make. That's the hardest thing ever. Absolutely. Just make the play that the you're supposed to make. The routine plays. They how does it? How does it carry over from Tampa Bay to Carolina? What What needs to happen? Because consistency can be kind of an issue with the team as well. The same thing. Just go out and do your job. Everybody has a job to do on that every sounds play. Sounds so simple to no, say. No, but guess what? Simplicity is the key, right? The minor thing, the details, keeping your eyes where they're supposed to be, doing the right thing. Don't get focused on what Bate got to do. I'm gonna do what Rock got to do. And that's, that's me holding my, myself accountable, but also being accountable to my teammates. And that's what it really come down, comes down to. And it's also trusting that Bake's doing his job. That's, that's what Therefore, it is. Therefore, you don't yeah. have to exactly. do his job. But if he focuses on doing his job to the best of his ability, he gonna do his job. I know that. So I gotta do what I gotta do to do and, my job. And that's what you kind of work on during the week. You yeah. build that trust during practice. You know, when that play came up in practice, say, Rock was in the place where he was supposed to be, so I don't got to worry about that when it comes to the game. Or Bake was in the place where he was supposed to be, so I don't got to worry about trying to cover his gap. That accountability comes in practice, so you know when the guy does it right in practice and when it comes in the game, it's like second nature. Absolutely. That's, that's do you your play job. the game in yeah, practice. Yeah. Do your job. Um, will they do their job for head coach Ron Rivera as he returns to Carolina? There is a lot of Carolina on the staff. Most every guy has been coached by a Carolina coach. Will it be a revenge game? We're going to talk about that when we come back. Do these guys step up for their coach? We'll see. Stay with us here on Champions. <sighs> Nachos, better with Pepsi. Hey man, we're back. We're back. Hey, you got any more of those fast plays? Tons. Check them out. Cool. Oh. Um, you know what? We're gonna need a bunch of each. A bunch. Hey, thanks, bud. Thanks, bud. Fast play is fast fun for everyone. Ooh, my peeps, look what I got! Ooh. Hey, we'll play them on the ship. The Maryland Lottery has lots of fast play games, and some have a progressive jackpot. The modern world is a digital world. At home, at work, or on the go. We rely on data every day. Losing it can result in lost family photos, lost business, or even a lost job. Want to avoid these problems? You need cyber protection, where backup and cybersecurity meet. Only Acronis offers backup solutions that also stop ransomware before your files are damaged. It's easy, efficient, and secure cyber protection for all your data. Try Acronis free for 30 days. Go to Acronis.com today for modern cyber protection. Veterans, you may have earned a variety of VA benefits. Did you know VA can help you further your education and pursue professional training? The Home Loan Guarantee Program can help you buy, repair, or adapt a home. VA provides housing support if you find yourself homeless or at risk of homelessness. And don't forget world-class health care. Learn more about these and other VA benefits. Visit choose.va.gov. My work has been viewed by a hundred million people. My work helps save lives. My work has gone platinum. My work gives people hope. I work at FedEx. Take your career to the next level with one of our many open positions. We last left you talking about, does a team get up to play against their former team? Head coach Ron Rivera told me that he doesn't believe in revenge games, but he will have emotions going back to Carolina for the first time. Because remember they faced Carolina last year, it was at FedEx Field. Mm -hmm. And it was a win that could have clinched the playoffs for him, and they didn't win. And he was ticked, because he thought they could have won that game, and they could have, but they had to wait, make it a little bit more dramatic. Will players get up, I mean, you, Almost every single coach on the staff came from Carolina. GMs came from Carolina. I mean, we it, that, that was it's a lot of Carolina. Coach brought the guys he trusted with him. Will guys kind of get up extra for this game, or is it just another game? Hell yeah, you get up extra. Yeah, it's, yeah. Especially yeah. when the team lets you go. Mm -hmm. It's like, hey, I'm going to show y'all. Y'all should have yeah. never let me go. You know what I mean? Like, if, if I played a former team that, I, that, that, that cut me, it's, it's like an extra little boost to yeah. really go out there and show, hey, y'all made a mistake by letting me go. So I got to get it this game. So. 
show these coaches that they made a mistake by letting me out of the building. Coaches included. Like, you know, coaches gonna be emotional. And all the other coaches on that staff are gonna be emotional. So it's gonna be a little bit more focused preparation this week, right? Could it be focus or distraction? I think it's gonna be more focus. More focus? More focus. Even with the players, the players know that coach came from there, so they know they gonna go out and focus a little bit more too, because they want him to get a victory. You know, they got victory Monday last week, so right, they, they gonna be, had, they I want, know they had they the day want off. another victory Monday, last, they gonna want another victory Monday coming up, so they gonna have a little bit more focus because they wanna win, not only for themselves, but for coach and the other coaches on the staff as well. Once you start tasting that winning, you want more of it. And of, of course, and then you gotta think, how much extra detail Ron is going to be able to provide against yeah. going against the Panthers, you know, especially our offensive coordinator was Cam offensive coordinator all those years in Tampa. I mean, in, um, in Carolina. So the amount of details that our defensive uh, team is going to get from these coaches is going to be crazy. They're going to have so many tips on what pisses Cam off, like what he's good at, what he's bad at, what we need to force him to do because they coached him. So they know what he's good at, what he's bad at. So. We're going to try and put ourselves in a position to put him in every uncomfortable position there is all game. And I think the best way to do that is to make them one dimensional, make him have to drop back and have to pass, not give him the run pass option. Because if you give Cam third and three, that's hell. Yeah. And that's he's hell. Gonna, he's going to run He's going to run the ball. He, he can pass that. it. But if you put him in 35, 37, now he got to make a decision. That's where you want to live with Cam. I want to take a, a second to ask you about the women in your lives and the impact that they have had. This was presented by Fresh Fine Wine. Rock, has there been a woman in your life that has made an impact or had an impact on your football career? It was definitely my mom. I mean, she was there every game from Pee Wee, YMCA, to junior college, to Kansas State University, to here. She was there. You know, I lost my mom back in 2004, my second year in the league. So. Um, that was extra motivation, but without a doubt, the woman that supported me the most was definitely my mom. She, she fueled the fire. I would have to say my mom and my sister. Uh, me and my sister are close in age. We're probably two years apart, maybe a year and a half, half the year. Um, but she was, you know, a, a, a state champion in basketball. So when we grew up playing basketball together, you know, I always had to beat her. So I learned to be really competitive because I couldn't allow my sister to beat me, you know what I mean? I couldn't, I couldn't allow it to happen. And uh, my mom was the athlete of the family. I didn't even know until I got older that my mom was like an all-state softball player. Um, that's what kind of made me, like, it built my character. You know, me and my mom probably argue so much because me and her are just alike. So it's like, it's like looking at the same person. Like, you get on my nerves with that stuff, but I get on her nerves because it's like seeing me and her seeing, you know what I mean? Yeah. So. My, my mom and my sister has been like the biggest woman that's been supportive for me in my Well, career. cheers to the moms Absolutely. that helped made you the men that you are, Absolutely. the football players that you were. And that is presented by the women of Washington and Fresh Fi Wine. And that is going to do it for this show. Thanks for joining us on Check, Please, our weekly check-in at DC Prime. Looks like we need to get some more food on the table. Right. We'll see you next time, everybody. It's time for dinner.